Buenos días, everyone. Chris is here, and here we are again in Connected Hearts. So let's not waste any more time, and let's continue, shall we? In the last episodes, we were just at the outside part of the of the caves. After we did this whole thing with who did you get? It? With Mary. And we managed to find a way out of all of this and the way to defeat between quotations the um how is it called? The wallets? So uh, let's continue right right after that part. Uh, let's see. I said soon even the wallets behind who being so pathetic don't even follow us. Their words only hurt when you allow them to do so. That's why, if you ignore them, they become completely inoffensive. As we wait, I realize I was right. I can see Sunny entering the cave. We must be very close. I can't hide my excitement rushing my steps. We are almost there, Mary. I said overflow, overflowing with joy to what she answered with another the big smile. And then finally we managed to cross the exit. I opened my eyes, surprised feeling a gentle wind cares my face. Before my eyes, there is a green me uh, meadow under the sun, so different from the haunted forest of before. And at the distance, I think I can see a village. We, we are out! exclaimed Mary, excited before suddenly hugging me with all of her affection. I can't help but blush. My heart stops for an instant from the surprise, and it later beat full of warm love. Y yes, we we are. I murmured, my lips full with my lips full of pride. By just seeing it, I can be sure this is a better place for her. Here she won't have to live alone hiding in the darkness. She won't have to avoid making noise or getting the attention. How... how did you know? She looks up to my eyes, staring at me with curiosity. I scratch my head, my cheek, shy. I... just realize their intentions. Maybe it was a poor answer, but it was enough. Even without understanding completely Mary, simplest, she breaks the hug and takes a few steps towards the village at the distance. Do you think I'd be better there than in the cabin? Yes, I am sure of it. Don't be shy and keep going. It will be very bad to stop after coming so far. Mary goes quiet for a moment. I see how the wind moves her hair as she thinks, being the only sound heard. Then she turns around, looking right into my eyes. Thank you so much, she said, giving me a radiant smile. So beautiful. I feel grateful. However, it only lasts for an instant. Enough time to, re to be recorded in my mind before disappearing. Suddenly, everything became very. I only sight of what it of what is in front of me, seeing it quickly transform into something else. It happened almost as fast as a blink. Twenty 
Dream number three. The four of, the four of them fell into a deep dream, each one entering their own world. Because of the darkness in their hearts, their worlds were also dark. But even then, they managed to find a utility of peace. It was a new opportunity for them to know each other and know what they were missing. While they were dreaming, the girl visited them frequently to make sure they were all right. She talked to them about uh, about how a prince would come to their rescue, because she couldn't do it herself. She says so many good things, there is no doubt she is dreaming. He is brave, kind, smart, and above everything, someone who will never leave a friend behind. She always say those words with a gentle smile living truthfully in every one of them, by living truthfully every one of them. The passage of time is imperceptible, imperce imperceptible to them. Each day is just like the other, with nothing changing, except for the girl who grows a little more. She drifts away from her original shapes, and grows into a dreamy-like one, so that when they meet each other, they have the same age. She couldn't stay a child forever. Time keeps passing, and there is no sign of the prince. The kids soon forgot about, about it, learning to accept the world born from their interior. But she never forgot. She's still waiting for the person who promised seeing her again. She knows it is unfair. She knows she wouldn't do it. She knows it's not his fault to forget it. But besides all that, she waits. Waits for the person that will finally make her open her heart. For the person who convinced her, he will be always at her side, with whom she didn't fear the happiness would end, or the loneliness come back. She waits for him, patiently waits, until finally she couldn't anymore. Anyone would say you are a normal person, but to me, there isn't anyone more special. Hmm. So I will assume this is the story of aliens, I think. Suddenly, I open my eyes. I rub my eyes and then blink. I have lost count of how many times I have woke up in the same way in a different place. Now I am in a room with a desk and many file cabinets. It looks like an office. I was sleeping on the desk with my hands and head resting on it. I find it funny to think that it was like I had falling asleep at work, but soon I get serious. What is this place? I ask it with curiosity. Then I get off the chair, or at least that was my intention before noticing there were some papers laying on the desk. Confused, I set my eyes on them. They seem to be the profiles of the kids in the orphanage. However, most of the words are gross and can't be read. I didn't doubt that was the work of Alice. Prophet 1 A uh, dear unknown, or Keith unknown, suffers of social anxiety. She is afraid of interacting with children, and even more with adults. 
she's afraid. People are always judging her. Oh, so this will be the profile of Mary. And the only thing that makes her comfortable is the passion she carries. Thankfully, in her time in the orphanage, she has shown signs of improvement. If it continues this way, in six months, she will be able for adoption. She will be available for adoption. Currently, there is a couple interested in her. Profile number two suffers of chronophobia, fear of time. Chronophobia is not a very known word, but it means fear or anxiety to the passage of time. Curiously, it is more common in either adults, but it can also appear in children when they fear for a particular, a particular date to come. Just like how adults are afraid of that. Sadly, the patient shows no signs of improvement, but rather his symptoms seem to get worse. If this continues, I suggest I have those of Centralina Diary for Anxiety, 50 milligrams, but Centralina Guys, this will be a little bit of topic, I think, but I think that's exactly the, the antidepressants that I am taking. My goodness, isn't that a really, a really good coincidence? Yeah, I think they are concentrating. So I have chronophobia? <laughs> no, of course not, that's not how the things work, but... Glad you get that that interesting, interesting coincidence. I don't know, that put a smile on my face, for real. Currently, there, are no one, there is no one looking to adopt him. If that doesn't change in the next year, the Hertz orphanage will adopt him. Profile number three, suffers of schizophrenia. But now that I think about it, who could that be? It could be Gary, but it sounds like it be that of Gary specifically having chronophobia. Which one could that be? It could be... Oh, it could be the, um, the Utah boy, I don't remember uh, his name now. The Utah boy that was on the, on the sunken ship. Because, like, he was just, like, waiting for, how did you get it? For the, for the day of, well, the ship just completely sinking. It could be an option. Profile 3. Suffers schizophrenia. Thankfully, it was detected in time, and he is currently under treatment. Most of the symptoms have disappeared. It is recommended to keep under vigilance in the orphanage for younger until he has shown a full recovery. Until then, there will be no discussing about his possible adoption. Jesus, I never thought. Well, I I am not any specialist or someone that has a relation with with the schizophrenia. But I actually didn't know it could be treated. Yeah, completely. I, well, as far as I was aware, it was like just you can like control it, but no, like treat it, even with a uh, prompt. Uh, how do you call it? Uh, how is it called? A prompt diagnostic. I didn't use it. Profile number four: post-traumatic stress. Symptoms include amnesia, so that should be Gary. I saw you after reading it. Suddenly, my hands tremble. Then, the paper slips from my fingers, flying back to the desk. I instantly put a hand in my forehead. I am sweating. My heart is heavy 
and here they get them. That is, yes, brother, who could that be? Just thinking about it, shook me to the very girl, like an earthquake. I close my eyes and slowly read, trying to react. It is better not to think about it. Now, I remember. I don't even know if those are real. I just could easily be dying with my mind. After thinking about it, I opened my eyes, with some relief in them. I said letting my anguish go with my breath. Then I noticed something more. With curiosity, I pick up a page written at hand, with very shaky letters. It seems whoever wrote it was very nervous. I don't want to use it. You can take it from me. It belongs to 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 me. The yes phrase is repeated countless times all over the page. I swallow after reading it. It is truly frightening. In science, I leave the page where I found it. I prefer to forget about it. Wasting no more time, I stand up. Before heading to the door, I check the file cabinets with curiosity. Half of them is a react, and those which aren't are empty. In the end, it's a waste of time. Without the A, I unlock the door and open it. It is then that I realize something. There is a name in the other side of the door. Dr. Richard Hertz. I read quietly. It seems I was in the office of a director of the orphanage. That would explain why those papers were on his desk. The first name is Crest and can't be read. I look at it in silence for a young second until finally I decide it's better to move on. With this, it seems I had finally explored all the rooms of the orphanage, with the exception of the basement, but Personally, I would prefer to avoid going down there. Now, there is only one of the strange doors I have to open. I hurry my steps. I am impatient to open the fourth door. I can't be sure, but my heart beats excited thinking it is the way back. Once in front of the door, I realize that ID pads are broken. They lay quietly on the floor, without any hope of ever being repaired. So, much better for me. Then I set my eyes on the floor, that a, on the door that awaits silently to be opened. I being doubting for a second, then as the only I extend my hand towards it. My heart jumps with each millimeter I get closer, feeling my very core shake as I turn to turn off. Turn off? What does that mean? Then I push the door, opening it. What I see on the other side, if me, uh, if me, yes, if me, without words. My eyes shine, reflecting a pure white light. I have my body trembles with a chill that runs down my spine. Then it warms up so much, it gets incinerated. I was 
drunk. It was on the way back. It is something very different. Something I have forgotten. What I see on the other side is... The Wonderland of the Fake Eyes. Once upon a time, there was a princess who lived in a castle. The castle was big and beautiful, with elegant and big gardens that made a labyrinth, with secret passages and hidden rooms. Wait, hidden rooms. Even with traps to protect itself from anyone who might try to invade it. But there was something the castle didn't have, and that was inhabitants. With the exception of the princess. She never met her parents or any servant. Since she can re remember all of her life have passed in there. And the only human face she had seen was her own, reflected on the mirrors and the calm weather. In the castle, there were fairies who gave helped her with the basic chores. They cook, clean, wash, wave new clothes for her. These fairies have the shape of flower petals floating in the air with colors blue, yellow, and red, and a mysterious aura surrounding them, very different from the image of fairies with human shapes described in books. But what they could do was limited. In the end, a castle is a human construction, and magical beings couldn't replace what human hands put together. In any case, even if they could, the princess dreamed with seeing another uh, with seeing another human face to hide the hands of someone else, hands like her own, and kiss his forehead. With any books to entertain herself, she inevitably began to jeer for the arrival of an egg to save her. Not from any dragon, but from a lioness. However, the castle was surrounded by a thick forest, full of spines, sharp as swords, and full of beasts, just as dangerous. Nobody in their sane mind would think of crossing it and risk his life. Even then, she kept waiting and waiting and waiting, until the beautiful castle began to turn into ruins. The fairies couldn't take care of it forever. Tired of waiting, the princess drank a magical potion that made her fly into a sound to see. And she wouldn't wake up until hearing the kind words of her younger name. Someone brave who will cross the forest to save her. Someone is smart who will find out how to deactivate the traps and solve the riddles of the fairies. Someone kind that can look beyond the spell in the mirror, which only reflects those who look deeply, not yearning for, ri for riches or glory, but to give a hand to someone who had never been able to hold one. Someone with a loving heart, who will know the right words to wake her up. But can someone like that even exist? This time I don't wake up. I was conscious the whole time. It's just that I was unable to perceive my surroundings. They act my act eye of my senses. And when it finally finishes, I realize I am back to the living room of the orphanage. Now, after looking more carefully, I notice this place 
and looks like the orphanage. But it is different. No, none of the furthers I had crossed before were there. They disappeared. The walls are made of stone instead of wood, and all the furniture and decoration were replaced by others, more elegant than old. Perhaps too old. Renaissance, Renaissance paintings, yards and bases, furniture that looks way too expensive. A uh, castle? That was the first thing that crossed my mind, remembering the words someone whispered to my ear while I was surrounded by the way they ate. Then I shake my head. I don't know where I am. I don't know if I am getting closer to the exit of this world or not. But I know I have to explore this place. I can feel my heart beat impatiently. Unlike the other worlds I visit, there is something guiding me. I stop for a moment and take a breath, and take a breath to calm myself. Where should I go? Oh, I had saved a very curse as per usual. There you go. And I yet see. We can go to the director's office, the library, basement, dining room and kitchen, the second floor, the exit or the backyard. Mm, what if we go in order? Let's go to the director's office first. I push the iron door, breathing with relief when I find it wasn't locked. I receive a big surprise. The inside of the room has changed, like everything else in the building. However, this was, I believe, the most drastic change on the now. The room was illuminated with candles, and now there were many old paintings hanging on the walls. The chair of the desk is a throne with big jewels and gold decorations. In the floor, there is a young and red carpet, and the desk is much bigger and fancier. At being said, it is the combination between the throne room of a castle and an office, something I would have never thought before. I must confess, it is even interesting if I were in another situation, I would have to investigate this castle more deeply. But now, it is not the time. In the desk, there is a paper right next to a pen and a bottle with ink. Without doubts, I read what it says. My last Roger decree, the decree is this. If we are to use everything at the hands of the enemy, it is better to destroy it. Give them nothing. i have been confused after reading it. No matter how much I think about it, I don't get what it means. I can't imagine who those enemies it takes about are. I just hope to never find them. Anyway, I take a deep breath and decide it's better not to think about it. I should keep moving. Where should I go? So let's go to the... Um, dining room and kitchen, for example. I don't know what I could find in the dining room, but I think it's better to explore all the rooms. I push the door. Finding with joy that it was on the act. Now there is a big wood table with a red table built, along with beautiful old chairs. There is also a couple of cups 
at the end of the table. I am talking about all the gold cups. With curiosity, I decanted of one of them. It seems to be fully of wine. I am not thirsty, so I don't drink from them. I saw I have here too many stories of novels being poisoned to the weed. Without saying a word, I moved to the kitchen. It has changed a lot. Now there is a big coal oven along with what seems to be a cauldron. A cauldron? There are other machines I can describe, simply because I don't know them, but they seem to be full of hot steam. It's better to avoid touching them. Next to the oven, there are dishes ready to be used, with the silverware I got laid in between each of them. At their side, there is a cake which says, Happy Birthday. The cake has no name, but tomorrow is my birthday, so I guess it is for me. It looks delicious, but I don't really like eating it. Then I blink noticing there is a photo close to it. Without second thoughts, I extend one hand to pick it up. It is the photo of a young girl with a paradise cake recently baked. Her face is grass, but I can see her hair is beyond. Suddenly, my body trembles with a shiver. Uh, I is? I murmured confused, my lips moved by itself. Written in the photo, it says, Make a wish. The cake has some candles lighting up, so I guess I have to make a wish and be open. I close my eyes and take a deep breath filling my lungs with hair. My wish is oh, this is an interesting an interesting question so let's see what we can answer I want to know who is Alice I want to go back home I want to know who is Alice I open my eyes and make a wish if I say it on the, if I say it out loud, it won't become real. Or so they say. Nothing happens. A few seconds pass without change, without change. Of course, nothing would happen. It is impossible for a dream to be, for a dream to become real. So you see. Suddenly, I hear a loud noise behind me. So loud, I jump scared. I turn around instantly, with my eyes wide open and my hair about to jump out, out of my chest. However, I find nothing. I remain stay for a long seconds, and I decide it is better to keep moving. Then I take a deep breath to calm myself. It was strange, but doesn't seem to be anything dangerous. It feels like it was a prank. Where should I go? And guys, I think this will be all for today. I think that this is a pretty good moment to leave it. We have to still, um, how did you guys to still check the library basement, the second floor, the fixture and the exit. So if you want to see any one of these um, rooms on a certain order, or you want to see one of them in a specific, just let me know in the comments and I will try to select first the one that it's like more like it or that more people actually wants, wants to see. So I think this will be all for today guys. 
Thank you so very much for watching. I do really super ultra appreciate it. Don't forget to leave a like, to subscribe, and to leave a nice comment. If you feel like it, of course. And I will see you on the next video. Or the next stream. Bye bye my cute cats. May the stars light be with you. And remember. I love you all.